Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Zina speaking. Today we'll be talking about what is a nasopalatine duct cyst. But before we continue, make sure to smash the subscribe button down below for more and more videos. Nasopalatine duct cyst is the most common non-odontogenic cyst. What do I mean by non-odontogenic? Which means that it is not tooth related. When I say that it is not tooth related, which means that when you do the sensibility test or the vitality test on the teeth, you will see that they are vital. They are not necrotic because th this type of cyst is non-odontogenic. It is not tooth related. So the teeth will remain vital. The location, nasopalatine, between the two maxillary central incisors. The shape in an x-ray, it will appear as a pear shape or heart shape radiolucency that will be seen between the two maxillary centrals. So this is the common location for the nasopalatine duct cyst. As you can see in the picture, the red circle points to the radiolucency located between the two maxillary centrals. Now, in order to remember the location, what I can say that nasopalatine, naso referred to nose, and your nose is in the center of your face. Just like the nasopalatine, it is in the midline, or it is located in the anterior part of the palate in the midline between the two maxillary centrals. Because like which teeth, which teeth, are located in the midline, your maxillary central. So between them, this is that's why they named it as nasopalatine because the naso referred to the nose. So nose is in the middle of your face. So that's why it's called nasopalatine duct cyst. This is another uh, radiographical image showing a large radiolucency that has been ignored for years. That's why basically it became bigger, the radiolucency became bigger, and it is located between the two maxillary centrals. So this is the nasopalatine duct cyst. Now let's talk about the causes behind this type of cyst. Number one is trauma. By the way, these are suspected causes. We don't know what is the exact etiology behind it. These are suspected causes. So number one is trauma to the anteriors might lead to this type of cyst or infection. Infection, of course, not coming from the tooth, not coming from the teeth because it is non-odontogenic cyst. It is not tooth related. Coming from the palate, infection coming from the palate. Or Lastly, remnants of the nasopalatine duct cyst, which I will explain in a minute. As you can see in the picture on the left side that has a red circle, this is the nasopalatine duct. Obstruction of the nasopalatine duct by any means, like a stone that is obstructing the duct from releasing its content, this will result in accumulation of a large cyst, as you can see in the picture on the right side, that has a white circle that, because the, there are remnants, so the, this is the cause behind it, remnants of the nasopalatine duct led to the accumulation, which led to the formation of the nasopalatine duct cyst. Now you might be wondering, what are the symptoms the patient will experience with such a cyst? Number one, they will have swelling on the anterior part of the palate, as you can see in the picture. Discharge, because it is a cyst, so there is a discharge. Lastly, the patient will tell you that I feel there is something hot on my palate. There's something burning me. This is because of the cyst. Now, what is the treatment that we can offer for our patients? Cyst is different from an abscess. Remember, 
abscess, you can do an incision and drainage for abscess, but you cannot do a drainage for a cyst. What you need to do if we have a cyst, we just re remove it. Complete removal of the cyst is indicated for such patients. Shall we do it under general anesthesia or can we do it under local anesthesia as well? We shall do it under local anesthesia where we will give nasopalatine nerve block so that the patient won't feel pain at all while we are removing it with blade number 11. Blade number 11 will be used. So no need to do it under general anesthesia. This can be done by any general dentist or a pathologist under local anesthesia. Thank you all for watching my video. If you have any questions or if you are in a doubt, please do write it down in the comment section below. Goodbye.